Welcome to the Master Info Week of the Università della Svizzera Italiana. For the whole week, you will find useful resources such as a welcome from our rector, Professor Boas Eretz, a campus tour, testimonials from both current students and alumni, and an overview of UZI's graduate's placement opportunities. You can watch a brief description of our students' services and a useful tutorial on how to fill the online application form. Now, you're about to attend a thorough presentation of the master structure and contents. You can ask us any question, academic or administrative related, through the chat below this video or through the form at the bottom of the page. After the presentation, we will answer all your questions during a live session with the director of the program. Thank you and enjoy. Welcome and thank you for joining the presentation of the Master in Marketing and Transformative Economy. So, who are the people uh, we are working with? First of all, in terms of students uh, who have joined the program over the last few years, uh, we can say that the program is about 15 years old now. And if we just have a look at the last six years, we observe uh, something that has been more or less maintained, but even more so increased over the last few years, which is a high variety of entry backgrounds. This master program has been totally redesigned a couple of years ago. Uh, and in this redesign process, we were particularly careful in uh, constructing the introductory courses, uh, especially in the first semester of the first year, as much as uh, all the subsequent courses uh, to facilitate uh, the inclusion and the full participation of students having studied whatever in their former uh, background. So if you have any type of background, you might consider integrating this program for the simple reason that marketing is a social discipline trying to understand how we approach consumption as both individuals and organizations. And in, the, in this effort of understanding the drivers of purchase and the drivers of consumption, uh, we can definitely profit from any insight coming from any hard or soft science background. What is the team uh, involved uh, in uh, the master? Uh, we are uh, especially four people. Uh, one uh, person is Roberta De Sanctis, uh, who is also professor uh, at Sdabocconi uh, in Milan. Uh, we are friends and colleagues. We have been friends and colleagues for about 20 years now. And what uh, she does at the level of our program is to take particular care of corporate relations. The second person is Michele Corenja, uh, who is a doctoral student and a, a, a teaching assistant here at UZI. He also completed his uh, studies in marketing at Bocconi University and she acts especially as our community manager. And finally, uh, there is uh, Chiara Crosi, uh, who is the program manager and the historical memory of this master. In terms of myself, after having spent about 12 years uh, as a lecturer in marketing at Bocconi, where I also directed a master program in marketing and communication, and having spent about seven years uh, at uh, ECP Europe Business School in Paris. So I landed in 2018 at UZI and I was uh, given the honor of uh, taking, uh, taking uh, care uh, of this new master program. When I'm saying new, I mean that we heavily redesigned the master program in 2018. So what are the objectives and the contents of this program? We uh, designed a master in marketing and transformative economy, starting from a very simple observation. If we Google um, a master in marketing, uh, we can come up with more than 4 million results, uh, as you see on the screen, which means that probably we just don't need one more program in marketing. When we therefore uh, took the lead on the program, we questioned for several months, uh, both internally uh, to the team and with our colleagues from the Faculty of Communication, Culture and Society, 
which could be uh, a, an innovative approach uh, to a master of science in marketing. And what this faculty in particular and using uh, more specifically could bring to the table. And we understood that what we were about uh, to do was in fact to try to question how marketing in, in broad terms, so in all its possible expressions, uh, can be brought back uh, to society, culture, and to the large impact that all marketing decisions have on people's life. It is absolutely evidence uh, that all we have done over the last decades in terms of boosting production uh, and boosting consumption have had severe costs on our environment. As much as uh, it's very recent news, uh, we can observe that the conduct of some marketeers is in fact a misconduct uh, during the current uh, COVID-19 uh, crisis, some companies are somehow still marketing uh, uh, solutions, if not remedies, uh, to the uh, COVID-19 uh, virus, which of course is not plausible since a, a therapy has not been designed yet. In light of that, we started observing the different behavior, marketing behavior of some companies, including, for example, uh, Ligo, but many others, such as the gigantic international company IKEA, with whom we collaborate since the refoundation of this program. And we observed that th some companies are way more conscious about the ethical and societal and environmental, of course, implications of their business. So we decided to include these reflections, uh, this critical thinking in a variety of courses we have all spread in the four semesters of the program. For example, we have a critical course uh, on the foundations and traditional approaches to marketing as much as to its critical transformations. We also have courses on communication and marketing ethics, as much as courses on corporate social responsibility or business ethics. Even more relevantly, one of the four specialization areas that we have completely redesigned this year uh, is in fact entitled and dedicated to corporate social responsibility and the common good. The second reason why we redesigned this program and we redesigned the program in the way we did uh, relates to the amount of uh, communication data that our society and our markets more specifically constantly construct, constantly circulate and constantly build. It has been st uh, estimated that over the last decade uh, our society has produced more information, more data than any amount of data produced since the origins of the humankind. So it's quite heavy, the impact in terms of communication and data at all possible levels. Free information as much as paid information circulates at high speed and across a multiplicity of channels, what we call touch points in marketing. So uh, what we should take into account is that marketers today uh, have to tackle not only the technicalities of this augmented uh, amount of information, of communication, of contents of data, but also to take into account how companies want to contribute to the constant augmentation of this data and how, for example, they intend to protect the use of the data, not only in terms of privacy of the customers, but in many more ways. So again, uh, we took these uh, considerations into account and we designed some courses that, for example, tackle this issue quite centrally and heavily. For example, instead of having a traditional course in digital marketing, we designed a course that is titled Digital Challenges in Marketing and Big Data, where we are not only covering the practice and the technicalities of digital marketing and big data management, but we are also considering the cultural, technological and societal implications of digital marketing and big data management.
In the same line, one of the four specializations that we designed is in fact about the use and the different ways of integrating and approaching communication contents from a marketing perspective. This specialization is titled cross-media, transmedia and multimodal communication. The third reason why we redesigned the master program relates to how marketing decisions heavily impact the culture in which we live. When I'm saying the culture in which we live, I'm talking about a broad notion of culture, of consumer culture. All the decisions that marketers take in terms of advertisements, of product design, of how they represent their customers, of how they position their brands, of how they design their points of sales, their websites, their social media contents, they all impact on the visual culture that we consume as much as on the material culture that we have. Just to give you a very rapid idea, uh, the fact that uh, girls have to wear and use pink, whereas boys have to wear and consume blue uh, objects is something that marketeers invented not so many decades back. And it has heavily impacted the visual culture in which we live as much as the gender roles and representations that we are more or less all confronted with. So again, if we have a look at what companies are doing, there are some challenging, interesting examples raising in terms of how new products and new services have been designed by taking into account from the very inception of this design of products and services, their eventual impact on the culture in which we all live. So we have some courses that try to debate uh, these aspects, for example, a course of critical consumer behavior as much as a course of advertising and consumer representations. But we have, for example, a course of marketing semiotics that is also very relevant for this understanding. The specialization in which we develop uh, this kind of skills and sensitivity is the most probably innovative specialization, which is titled visual and material culture. Finally, there is a fourth motivation that uh, has been driving, driving sorry, our uh, redesign. And this uh, kind of uh, consideration relates to what should be or what could be the eventual final uh, effect or say objective of marketing actions. Quite often, and since the foundation of our discipline, the main understanding has been that the final eventual aim of marketeers is in fact to improve customers' utility. Uh, which has been then uh, redesigned and redeveloped around notions such as customer value or customer satisfaction. Well, we are not saying that these concepts are to be thrown away, but in light of what has happened uh, in an international, um, say, uh, scale, at an international scale uh, in the marketing discipline and practice over, say, the last uh, um, 10 years or so, uh, more and more companies and researchers started questioning another possible objective for marketing, which would not just be the construction of, um, say, economic value for our or practical value for our customers, but could also uh, reside uh, in the construction, in the uh, nurturing, in the, in the fostering of our customers' well-being. These in other disciplines, such as uh, economics, uh, has been titled the economics of well-being or the economics of happiness, and, uh, and is receiving increasing attention. Similarly, <clears throat> several companies today are considering how their uh, interventions in terms of marketing interventions, again, in broad sense, from product design to communication to brand initiatives and more, high, um, highlight the role these brands have in changing uh, the cultural norms that are pressuring our well-being. Uh, for example, if we are afraid or feel constricted by strict gender norms, some brands 
can help release or uh, lighten up these gender norms uh, through their actions, through their communication. So this becomes, again, a strictly relevant point of consideration. We have, for example, courses on consumer vulnerability and um, the notion of consum consumer well-being. One course very innovative on economics of well-being and one course on market system dynamics in which we try to use a more sociological approach to the functioning of markets in order to unveil how markets work and how markets do not work. So the construction of markets and how this construction of markets impact the well-being of all the actors operating in the market. The specialization in which we go to a deeper degree in this kind of reasoning is a customer experience and value, which again, we analyze from a broader perspective on what value mean or should mean. So in sum, what is new with this program? Two main things. First of all, as we said, we are not just considering theories, strategies, actions, tools that help our students as future marketing managers uh, to improve um, the capacity of their actions to satisfy customer needs and produce, generate value for said customers. We are also taking into account what happens when together with uh, need satisfaction and value creation, we also include issues of personal and societal well-being. The second thing that this market uh, master sorry, tries to make is also to take into account what happens to marketing when we locate marketing also in new economic systems of exchange. Typically, uh, as the name marketing says, marketing is about one specific type of economic system, which is the market system, in which the assumption is that we have a producer, we have a, a customer, and this producer sells, so transfers ownership of what the producer does to the customer via the payment of a price. So this market mechanism is, of course, one of the leading uh, mechanisms for economic exchange, but it's not the sole one. So access-based economy, sharing economy, gift economy are just some uh, very important and I would say decent illustrations of alternative economic systems of exchange, which we also try to address and cover in the program. So if I am to um, more or less resume all we are saying into a visual picture, this is how the program would look like. Well, this is what we tried uh, to uh, put on the table for our students, for our partners. We have brought together a program that you can find illustrated quite richly on our website. So the purpose of this presentation was not that much to enter the specific contents, which I'm just very rapidly illustrating in this video, but to spend more time on explaining you why this content were designed. So as you see, we have four semesters. The first year, so the first two semesters are the, the two semesters in which we provide all mandatory core courses, uh, which cover basically uh, the 
the course is helping you to frame the context within which marketing decisions are taken, semester one, and how once this framing has been done, how these decisions can be implemented, so the actions that marketers can take into the context. During the second year, in the third semester, we activate the four specialization areas that help you select among a very rich catalog of courses from four faculties, including our faculty, but also the Faculty of Economics, the Faculty of Architecture, and the Faculty of Informatics, in order to combine a very rich, uh, rich and pretty, I would say, unique bunch of electives. During this third semester, you can also decide for an exchange program. Semester four, instead, is the one that is dedicated to the uh, mise en place, uh, so basically to the um, use of all the notions you have acquired in the first three semesters. So you will be left free to choose between an internship um, and a field project. A field project is a consulting project that you conduct within a small team over the last two years, we have had field projects with a very interesting startup selling online, a pure e-commerce practice for the moment, selling uh, food-related products from the most ancient wheel meal uh, in, uh, in Ticino, Home Baker is the name. We have had uh, another project with uh, Di Saronno uh, on the repositioning of this brand in the Swiss market. We have had a project with Caring, uh, trying to uh, redesign uh, the customer uh, satisfaction approach of Caring on a global scale. We are now currently running a project with Mandarin Oriental, in particular the Como uh, outlet, and we also are running a project with the Power Tools division of Robert Bosch. So, in terms of career prospects, you can read more, again, on our website, but uh, in, a, in a few uh, highlights, I can just tell you that marketing constitutes one of the biggest employment markets for all students enrolled in a business school in managerial studies, broadly speaking. About one third of state students end up holding a marketing related profession. And this applies on a pretty international scale. So by uh, embarking uh, in this program, you would not have limitations in terms of industries, in terms of countries, in terms of market contexts, or in terms, of course, of geographical scope. Uh, the number of positions, of job positions, that you can more or less imagine covering is in, the, is in terms of really hundreds. Uh, when, in fact, it comes to our employment outcomes, as you see, uh, the largest majority of our students find a job in very quick uh, in a very short period in time after uh, the uh, degree. Uh, also, in terms of average salary, the average salary compared to other nations is pretty satisfactory, we think. So, for any further information, please check uh, on our website, uh, which is very rich in terms of information. You can even consider following us on our newborn uh, Instagram account in which we try to conduct with our students and with any other external party a constant dialogue on some uh, relevant uh, thematic uh, issues uh, that are central to the identity of our program. And certainly you can call us for anything that you need about your eventual possible uh, involvement in the program. So I really thank you for your attention. I remind you that the application deadlines are 31 May for all students outside, the, um, outside Europe and 31st August for uh, instead all European uh, students. Uh, if you wish to apply for a UC scholarship, uh, which is not the sole source of scholarships that you might consider uh, using, however, the internal deadline is the 31 
of July. Thank you very much and don't forget that this program has been designed to take into account what we can do today for a better tomorrow. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Thanks for uh, watching the Mastering Marketing and Transformative Economy presentation. Uh, we hope that the, the information were clear and uh, thorough. Uh, in order to answer all the questions you sent us, uh, joining me, uh, Luca Visconti, Director of the Master in uh, Marketing and Transformative Economy. Welcome. Good afternoon <laughs> and welcome everybody. And uh, Chiara Cruzi, the coordinator of the program. Uh, welcome. First of all, uh, I want to remind you that you can interact with us by writing questions through the live chat below the video you're watching now. This live chat will be on uh, until the end of this session. And if you want to send us uh, more personal or uh, questions that you don't want to uh, be you know, visible to everybody, uh, you have a form below the chat mm -hmm. at the end of the page. This form will be uh, available throughout the week and uh, the coming weeks as well. So keep sending us uh, your questions. We will answer you uh, immediately or as soon as we can. So let's dive into the questions. First of all, uh, Mario is asking us through the chat, how many students will be taken in the, in the course? Okay, so we don't have a strict number of students. Uh, usually uh, the, the size of our master program ranges between 30 to 40 students. So this is a f fair indication. But we typically select upon the vita, the letter that we ask, the motivation letter, mm -hmm. and that this is more how it works. Okay, thanks, uh, Luca. Next question is from Ivy, uh, again for, for you, for, uh, for the director, and is, if I want to work in the area of brand management, mm -hmm. which kind of specialization uh, should I choose? <laughs> It's a very good question and forward-looking, uh, <laughs> but um, this is one of my areas of expertise and passion. So probably there would be, depending on how you want to approach brand management, that has become a very broad area of expertise and competencies, uh, you might select uh, a couple at least of the specializations. Probably one could be in visual and material culture, especially if you want to approach branding from what we call a cultural branding perspective, mm -hmm. which means understanding that brands today are not only uh, cognitive devices, something that has to fix uh, the awareness of products and, and, and services delivered by a, a company um, uh, to, to, to specific markets, but it's also something that creates conversations between companies and their various audiences. Mm -hmm. So from this perspective, visual and material culture could be a valid option. Otherwise, if you consider uh, working more in the, say, value creation area, uh, this could be the customer experience and value specialization. Finally, <laughs> if you were uh, to be more interested in uh, the communication side of branding, also the cross-media and transmedia specialization could really help. Okay. And maybe one point that I might add is the following. Uh, considering that a specialization uh, to be earned implies 18 credits over the 30 credits of a semester, mm -hmm. you might pick up one specialization and then select additional uh, elective courses from one or more other specializations in order to really craft uh, and tailor the profile you want to cover in the job market. Okay, thanks. It's very thorough explanation. Thank you. Now, uh, a question that we received from the the, the online form. Okay. Uh, and it's mm, probably something that can answer uh, Chiara, the coordinator of the program. It's uh, from Rachel, uh, and she's probably uh, from far, uh, from very far from Switzerland, because she's asking. Uh, I know that with this uh, coronavirus situation, uh, visa processing is uh, uh, probably disrupted. Can you tell me when they will start processing visa back? Yes, so thank you for the question. Um, so at the moment, yes, embassies don't accept visa applications until mid-June. 
Um, so what you can do is prepare the documents required so you're ready um, if and when they, um, they accept applications. Uh, we also suggest you to visit the embassy's website for updates and also our website for updates. Perfect. Okay, thanks. I'm sure we will, uh, Chiara and uh, we as a study advisory service, we will be, you know, uh, available and we will send you all the updates and the news uh, about this very uh, delicate topic for, uh, for students that want to come to Lugano from far, uh, far away. And if I may just add sure. one point to this <clears throat> question, I would love to, to just clarify that we are uh, ready and, and getting ready for the worst scenario. So in, in any case, depending on how things will evolve, we will be able to keep on going with the master mm -hmm. as we have been doing with some good satisfaction, I would say also over the last semester. Thanks. It's very important to remark that we moved on classes online for this semester already yes. and as uh, professor visconti said students are pretty satisfied okay let's go further uh, questions are uh, coming and uh, let me check so jason is asking uh, is saying as hello first <laughs> and i checked the study plan and i saw that the internship uh, and or field project uh, is worth 12 ects mm -hmm. so is it so important uh, he's asking for the for the. Uh, yes, program. it is. It is. Uh, you you have to consider that this master program uh, is in the first three semesters pretty rich and to some extent even heavy in terms of teaching load. You are gaining 90 credits just out of courses, projects uh, with companies uh, within uh, the, the, the scheduled uh, class activities. So the last semester is the semester in which we are moving towards uh, two main areas. This transformation is still to be confirmed. It will be confirmed in about a couple of weeks, but the directions that I can start sharing with you are the following. Uh, one first big capstone will be on the application of all you have been learning over the first three semesters. And you might be, uh, say, free to select one uh, among three uh, alternatives. One would be a master thesis, mm -hmm. which is more speculative and theoretical in nature. And we think a master thesis is particularly suitable for students who might be willing to enter for example, uh, research, market research companies, consulting companies, or to continue with a doctorate. Uh, the second option would be uh, a field project, which instead consists in a consulting project supervised by one or more professors uh, from UZI. And this is particularly uh, relevant for students who love intellectual and practical challenges. And finally, internships which are particularly instead relevant for students that might be, uh, say, uh, younger in terms of professional experience mm -hmm. and so more eager to start on a lonely, isolated individual basis in the job market. The second trajectory for mm -hmm. the final semester is probably a, a, a capstone more uh, built around uh, professionalizing skills such as public speaking, mm -hmm. which should accompany our students in uh, a, a, an easier, say, encounter with the job market. Okay, thanks. And I will uh, link to this uh, question with what you were saying at the end. There's a question from... Uh, uh, Chiara, mm -hmm. uh, who's asking about this, uh, she said, how long does it take to find a job after graduation, okay. on average, of course? Okay, so on that side, we have very precise indications because we regularly monitor uh, the, um, the, 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 the placement of our alumni. So what I can share with you is that the 93% of our students find a job within uh, about two, a bit more than two months uh, from graduation. Okay. So it's, I think, a quite reassuring information. Definitely a short amount of time. Uh, okay, go further. You keep, send, you keep sending your questions and we will answer. A lot of questions are, are coming. Um, this is uh, a, a strong one, a good one for Professor Visconti, okay. is why should I choose Uzi's Master in Marketing instead of Bocconi's? 
Ah. <laughs> I am really undecided, he's asking uh, Maria Adele. Okay, I think in, in that stage you should all be uh, considering options uh, because, of course, if you process your choice uh, smartly, uh, you, it means that you are considering options. Bocconi is, of course, one option uh, if you are interested in marketing. I've been working at Bocconi for about 13 years and I was, in fact, the director of one master program at Bocconi, the master program called MIMEC, Master in Marketing and Communication, mm -hmm. which is a specialized master. So at Bocconi, you have two main alternatives if you want to get qualifications in marketing. One is a specialized master, about one year, mm -hmm. which is usually um, oriented towards uh, students with non-managerial backgrounds. And it's, of course, shorter, more intense uh, for this kind of people. Um, the second type of, um, of program at Bocconi is instead the Master of Science in Marketing Management, which is the more um, sort of closely related program uh, with reference to our, uh, our program, but they do differ substantially. Why? Because Bocconi has taken one trajectory in uh, approaching uh, the marketing discipline and, of course, also the marketing professions, which is what we call the marketing science approach. So Bocconi is very much into uh, numbers, so to say, um, more hard sciences, whereas at uh, Uzi uh, we are more into this, uh, say, cultural approach to marketing, mm -hmm. which instead combines disciplines such as sociology, cultural psychology, social psychology, anthropology, uh, together, of course, with some numbers. So the, the, the difference is major uh, in terms of theories, of contents, and of course, of possible um, professions. That said, uh, you should start considering that the two programs open to a variety of job profiles. Mm -hmm. And really, in marketing, it's in the, in the order of hundreds. Yeah, OK. Thanks. I think the, you draw a very, you know, uh, specific picture of how the two um, offerings from the two universities are different, and uh, now it's up to uh, students, to to Maria Adele in, in particular, to decide or to choose which is the one more suitable for her uh, choice. Okay, let's go further. <coughs> uh, Ivan is asking if I want to apply for the Uzi scholarships. Mm -hmm. Do I need to get my degree before uh, the application or do I have more time? How does this work? Uh, so Chiara maybe can uh, help us out with this? Yes, so thank you for the question. Um, yes, you have to um, graduate before um, you can enter um, the application for the scholarship. Um, so unless uh, um, we have uh, um, changed uh, so maybe there are some new uh, scholarship that can be uh, uh, applied to but for the moment you have to send in the application by the end of july so you have to be graduated before the end of july because uh, uh, we need to have uh, your uh, um, final uh, um, graduation grade uh, in order to select uh, um, who is going to be uh, granted the scholarship um, the university is working um, on having extra scholarship because um, we know that uh, this is a difficult period for um, many families. So um, there might be more. And uh, um, so again, uh, our website is going to be um, updated with all information. Thanks for, thanks for, the, for the information. Uh, Chiara, it's very important what you said. We, we are aware as, a, as an institution that these are difficult times uh, or can be difficult times for, for a lot of families and we are uh, putting in huge efforts to increase the amount of the scholarships we uh, can deliver to students. Yeah, on that point, I think the number will be significantly increased from in terms of the information we, we have. And it might be nice for you to know in order to capture 
to grasp a bit the, the culture, the organizational culture of Uzi, that in the moment we speak, uh, Uzi launched um, a fundraising campaign, and this fundraising campaign will move on to, say, waves. The first wave is, in fact, to collect money from the administrative uh, people and the professors working at Uzi to finance these scholarships, because we believe that we should be the first to act in favor of these hard times, and then uh, external fundraisers, of course, will also be, 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 be contacted. Thank you, and it's uh, very important information as well. This is uh, 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 very fresh news, and thanks for sharing this. Okay, then the next one is from Giulio. Mm -hmm. And it's for you, uh, Professor Visconti, is if one day I'm tired of working in the marketing world, Mm -hmm. Is there a chance I can apply to other management positions outside marketing? Okay. Very fair point. I think, uh, well, I will answer in two main ways. The first one is the following. Uh, marketing is really a super big area of employment. So it probably won't last a single life to cover all the different marketing positions that a person can can. can to some extent, aspire to after such a program. Second point, um, on average, and this is something that applies to every business school, to every university uh, in the world, um, say, preparing uh, people, students, in the management field, on average, uh, graduates in management end up having uh, a job that is related to marketing in one-third of the cases, regardless of their specialization. So it means that marketing together with finance remain, so far, the two main areas of employment. Of course, uh, you can definitely apply to other positions uh, in other fields. Uh, if I look into our employment data, we mm -hmm. already have some of our students working in non-strictly marketing-related positions, minorities, but it's doable. Mm -hmm. However, uh, if the question uh, is about taking a position of general management, mm -hmm. then of course this is something uh, that projects you uh, in, a, in a more remote future, and maybe an executive MBA at a certain point could be a valid option. Okay, perfect, thanks. Uh, we have a few more questions, and we are uh, approaching the, the end of our session. So, Matteo is asking, if I don't have the English certification mm -hmm. of B2 level right now, but I have done English exams during the bachelor, is it okay uh, enough? Well, to integrate the master, uh, he or, uh, needs to have at least a, a, a B2 uh, level. Yes. But before the completion of the program, he needs to uh, reach the C1 level. Yes. So, yes, he can postulate, but at a certain point, he needs to yes. meet the standards. Okay. Chiara, do you have anything to add about this B2 level, but uh, applying and being accepted with uh, English exams taking during bachelor? Yes, so um, uh, the university has decided to give some more time mm -hmm. uh, because we know that uh, most of the um, English centers where you, where you can take exams are closed now. So um, you can start the master without a certificate uh, B2 level, but you have to obtain it uh, by the end of December. So you should know yourself that you have the level to start the program and be able to attend the lessons successfully and then pass the exam uh, within the end of the first semester. Okay, thanks. So there are a few uh, questions more. Uh, this one again is for Professor Visconti. How the hours of the courses are divided into the week? This is something maybe you can say yes, something, yes, but yes. probably Chiara is... Well, uh, I have a rough idea, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it's something we, we manage. I mean, Chiara <coughs> is in charge of that, but of course <laughs> we, we exchange quite a lot of, about the calendar. So usually uh, we do not have more than six hours per day on average. There might be exceptions. There are days with half a day of teaching and days which might be a bit heavier, but these are isolated cases. What usually happen, uh, happens here at UZI is that for professors f outside our faculty, mm -hmm. uh, we tend to concentrate, to compact their teaching on the last two days of the week. Otherwise, uh, you can correct me, Chiara, but usually we do not cover Friday 
uh, with courses. So it's usually, I mean, uh, the full week, but typically from Monday to Thursday. Okay. I think it's a very specific question with a very specific <laughs> answer. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, let's go on. Corinna is asking, hello, uh, first hello. of all, the master has legal value in Italy. So is it like uh, Laurea Magistrale? Yes, definitely. Yes, it definitely has. Chiara, do you have something to add uh, on this? No? No. It's definitely valid. Uh, it's like a Laurea Magistrale. It's a two-year program. It's worth 120 ECTS, which is exactly the same amount that, it's, that, is, that a Laurea Magistrale is uh, in terms of uh, uh, studying and uh, exams. Uh, so what happens is that basically uh, your, your degree is exactly like, like a laurea magistrale. It's not directly the same just in one case when if you want to apply uh, for a national uh, uh, call uh, for in Italy. Yes. Uh, in that case, you must add to, to, to your degree uh, a recognition that you should ask to the uh, education ministry, the MIUR, it's called in Italy, and it's just a formality, mm -hmm. but it must be done because this uh, that Uzi uh, gives you is still a foreign degree if you are Italian, if you're thinking about Italy. But in terms of uh, legal value, it's exactly the same. If I can just add one more thing uh, rapidly. Um, uh, this master um, provides a, a degree from two faculties, the Faculty of Communication, Culture and Society and the Faculty of Economics. So it might be considered as an additional point maybe for some of our prospects. Good point. And Thanks. Then, next question is from Matteo. Are you thinking of activating an English exam at UZI for those that don't have IELTS or first certificate? I think he's uh, referring to the, to the issue we already mentioned that yes. uh, certification centers are closed at the moment because of the uh, pandemic. Uh, so Chiara, do you have an answer on this? Uh, yes, yeah, so for the moment, UZI doesn't offer um, an, exam, an internal exam here at UZI. Uh, but uh, it might change depending on the situation, uh, how the situation with COVID evolves. So if, um, if during the, uh, the fall semester, uh, the centers are still closed, so no one can take uh, exams outside, uh, um, then Uzi might offer, uh, decide to offer an internal exam. Okay, so it's still yeah. undecided because we are waiting for the Yes. the situation to, yes, to settle, to evolve a little bit. So but hold on and we will inform you. I guess uh, UZI is an accredited site mm. for English certifications. Yes, we are an I IELTS uh, uh, center. Okay. And uh, yes, as soon as we, uh, the centers and the exams yeah, <laughs> yes, resumes, we will be taking uh, uh, students here for, sure. for their exams. Then Sophia, again, at uh, the moment it's not possible today. Yeah, it's exactly it, it, almost the same question, but a little bit different. It's not possible to take an English certification, but how will it be possible to access the master? Chiara, if I don't have a certificate and I cannot take it uh, in the coming months, how, how can I apply and how can I be admitted? So you can access the master even without any kind of certificate. Uh, you should know yourself uh, that you have uh, the level to um, to attend the master, and then uh, you have to know that by December you have to pass the B2 um, exam. So uh, it's your concern to to study and uh, and be uh, ready to see the exam and pass it. Okay, so let me be sure that I understand myself. So you should uh, you can apply. You will be admitted if, if all the other documents are okay. Uh, and you must uh, take the exam and show us the right level uh, at the latest by the end of the of the year, so the end of December, right? Yes. Okay. So you will be uh, admitted under the condition that you pass the exam by the end of December. So you be, you have to be careful uh, that if you fail the exam in December, so if you don't reach the B2 level, then you will have to uh, leave the, the master, so you cannot continue with your study. Perfect, perfect, perfect. thanks. Perfect. 
Uh, and then the last question we've got through the chat, and then I think we'll wrap this session up. Uh, it's from Julio again. The uh, second question from Julio um, is thanking uh, Professor Visconti for his oh, answer. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask if there's, if it's possible to have some data regarding the students who completed the master in marketing, marketing and transformative economy. Since uh, since its uh, new formula. Ah, okay, okay, okay. No, not not yet, <coughs> uh, because we um, are now entering the third edition. So from from September, the third edition starts. So we are now completing uh, the, the the first full program. Uh, in any case, we are very confident uh, for the simple reason that the way we redesigned this master program was not to take something away from a traditional master in marketing, but to instead add something on top of a traditional master in marketing. So uh, our students have all the skills and all the capacities to basically aspire to make any kind of job mm -hmm. they could do before the redesign. What they can do instead is to also open up uh, the spectrum of opportunities. So from that point onwards, of course, I don't have fresh data or specific yeah. data, but the, in, in general, the feedbacks we received so far from all organizations we have been working are very, very supportive. Okay, thanks. It, one last question arrives uh, uh, now. It's from uh, uh, ISA. Uh, which are the partner university to do the exchange? Mm -hmm. They are many. Uh, mm -hmm. the, our international relations office uh, has mm -hmm. more than 100 uh, um, uh, partners, universities. They are, they are you know, divided or, or split amongst the different faculties here at UZI. So a uh, thorough list, like right now I'm not uh, able to do that. Maybe Professor Visconti has a few uh, picks yes. from, well. from the list <laughs> for you. Uh, well, um, it's not a secret, uh, any time I have the chance of describing a bit further this program, it's not a secret that redesigning a master program and especially exploring more innovative pathways take, takes time. So we took the first two years to be very sure about the pedagogical content mm -hmm. and the institutional partners, so companies, for example, we are working with, uh, and some of them are accompanying us with some, some say, steady support. Now, this year, uh, we will turn towards uh, international partnerships. Mm -hmm. So just to make the point clear, among the more than 100 contacts, universities, that UZI has, I can estimate about 20 of them to be uh, relevant for a marketing exchange. Mm -hmm. um, but in the forthcoming months, we will work on the activation of more structured international exchange programs, which means, pro, uh, say, partnerships that are very much tailored to our master okay. program. Um, incredible. I mean, it was the, 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 <laughs> the last question. It was an, uh, another news. Uh, yeah, it's something uh, we really have in mind. Very good. So I think it's, uh, it's all. Uh, I thank you all for attending. Thank you. Hopefully, uh, mm, Professor Visconti and uh, Chiara Cruzi help you uh, understand all the aspects that this uh, very interesting mar Master in Marketing and Transformative Economy uh, can mm -hmm. offer you and that we helped you uh, taking your decision at least a little bit. And we hope to see you all here in September in Lugano uh, here at UZI. Thanks again to Professor Visconti. No, thank you. Thank you very much for organizing this meeting. And if you have any question, any doubt, uh, feel free also to contact me directly. My email address is luca.visconti uh, at uzi.ch. Perfect. Keep sending your questions through the form uh, at the bottom of this page, and we will answer. We will forward, qu forward questions to professors. And uh, thanks again to Chiara as well for thank joining you us. Much, Chiara. And for, for us, uh, it's, it's all. Thanks and goodbye. Have a nice evening. Bye.